What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we'll be doing a full side-by-side -side comparison between the iPhone XR and the new Samsung Galaxy S10e. Both the XR and S10e are the least expensive options from Apple and Samsung right now, and aside from their similar pricing, everything else about these phones is actually very different. I'm gonna go over all the specs and features for these phones, I'll talk about the few similarities and tons of differences, and hopefully by the end of this video, it'll help you decide which phone might be the best for you if you you happen to be in the market for a new one. If I do miss anything in this video about these two phones, feel free to let me know in the comments, but I'm going to try my best at everything that's important. And of course, let me know which device you think is the better option. So first things first, let's talk about pricing and availability. The iPhone XR was released back in September, so it's about six months old now already, but it's still Apple's current cheapest iPhone with a full retail price of $749. Apple, of course, does like to advertise their trade-in options and some carriers might also have some deals. So your price may vary a little bit depending on your situation. And this is the same story with Samsung's S10e too. It is a brand new device having been launched just a week ago, and it comes in with a full retail price of $749. Once again, Samsung also has some trade-in offers if you want to forfeit your old phone, and your carrier might also offer a deal as well. But for all intents and purposes, the base price of both of these phones is technically the same. However, the storage configuration options actually end up revealing some huge differences in what you get across the devices. There are a number of options you can choose from with both of these phones. The iPhone XR comes in six different colors, black, white, blue, yellow, coral, and red. And you can also upgrade your storage capacity as well, which will increase the price. 749 for 64 gigabytes, like I said, 799 for 128 gigabytes, and 899 for 256. And each of these iPhone XR models has just one RAM option, three gigabytes. On the Samsung side, you have some options as well. The S10e can be purchased in Prism White, Prism Black, Prism Blue, and Flamingo Pink here in the US. And there's also Prism Green and Canary Yellow if you're outside the US. As far as color selection, I think the 10R definitely has the upper hand here. However, Samsung's S10e has far better storage options. The base model S10e at $749 ships with 128 gigs, so twice as much for the same price compared to the iPhone 10R. For $849, you can get the 256 6 gigabyte model, which once again is cheaper than what you would be getting from the iPhone. And beyond that, the S10e still offers expandable storage via a micro SD card up to 512 gigabytes. In addition to the increase in storage, you'll also be getting either 6 gigabytes of RAM or 8 gigabytes of RAM, depending on which storage option you go with. All this means is that you're simply getting more storage for considerably less money with the S10e and more RAM as well. And if those are your biggest concerns, I think the choice is obvious. The rest of the internal specs of these devices are a little harder to compare. The iPhone XR rocks Apple's own A12 Bionic chip and next-gen neural engine. You're also getting just 3GB of RAM, like I said, and a 2942 mAh battery. On the Samsung side, the S10e is powered by either a Snapdragon 855 processor or the Exynos 9820, depending on where in the world the device is from, an Adreno 640 or ARM GPU, 6GB or 8GB of RAM, like I mentioned earlier, and a 3100 milliamp battery. Apple's own iOS is specifically optimized to run on all iPhones, and with the 10R being one of the most current offerings, you're obviously getting a silky smooth user experience even with a noticeably lower RAM. With the S10e, you're also getting a quick and responsive experience with Android, but all in all, it's really a matter of preference here as far as iOS versus Android. The internal specs have less to do with the overall experience, mostly because iOS in particular is specifically optimized for Apple's own devices, which is why they don't feel the need to go overboard with things like RAM. All in all, you're going to get nearly identical app load and launch times no matter which phone you choose, and the speed of these devices isn't necessarily a deciding factor. Battery life is also very similar across both of these phones, even with the slightly different battery capacity and internal specs. I've personally seen about 10 hours of screen on time across both of these phones over the last week or so, and obviously your experience is going to vary depending on how much you use your phone, but once again, I personally haven't found too much of a noticeable difference at all as far as the battery life. One huge difference with these phones though is actually the charging speeds and the accessories included in the box. The iPhone XR ships with Apple's standard lightning cable and 5 watt USB wall plug, which is just kind of embarrassing at this point, with excruciatingly slow charging speeds compared to the fast charging plug that comes in the box with the S10e. Now you can purchase a USB-C PD wall plug and USB cable separately that will fast charge the iPhone XR, but that might run you an additional 50 bucks or so after you've already bought the phone. With the S10e, you're simply getting much faster charging with the included wall plug at no additional cost. 
There is also a slight difference in wireless charging speeds as well. The iPhone XR supports Qi charging at 7.5 watts, while the S10e can wirelessly charge at 12 watts. So all in all, no matter which way you choose to charge, the S10e is just going to juice up faster out of the box. And one more charging feature the S10e has that the XR does not is the new wireless power share option, which allows you to use the S10e itself to wirelessly charge another device. So the way this works is you just put another phone on top of the S10e and you can charge up that device. You can also throw on the new Samsung Galaxy Buds or Galaxy Watch as well, and while it isn't the fastest charging option in the world, it's a really interesting and convenient additional feature specific to the S10 lineup and not available at all on the iPhone. As far as the other major hardware differences between these phones, the biggest is definitely going to be the screens. One of the most controversial things about the iPhone XR is its 6.1 inch 1792 by 828 LCD display at 326 pixels per inch. Apple advertises it as their Liquid Retina HD display, but it's effectively a less than 1080p LCD panel that honestly still looks good, but falls far short of what you're getting on the S10e. With Samsung, they offer a 5.8 inch Full HD AMOLED Infinity display at a 2280 by 1080 resolution at 438 pixels per inch. Side by side, I think the choice is obvious here with the S10e simply having a brighter display with more vibrant colors and sharper detail. It's certainly tough to tell on camera and in this video, but the S10e's display is better overall, both on paper with the specs and in practice when comparing the two side by side. And I personally just don't find that too surprising. One thing you'll also notice is that the displays and bezels for these devices are quite different in size as well. The iPhone XR of course has that notch across the top for the earpiece, cameras, and face ID sensors, while Samsung introduced a new cutout design that eliminates the notch and places the front camera in the top right corner. This translates to an 83.3% screen to body ratio for the S10e and a 79% screen to body ratio on the iPhone. The side bezels on the S10e are also just a bit thinner here, but both phones have a similarly thick bottom bezel. And like I mentioned earlier, you're getting a 5 8 inch display on the S10e and 6.2 inch on the 10R, and that obviously means that the S10e is the much smaller device overall. As far as the other physical aspects of both of these phones, you're getting a very similar form factor for both devices here. They are both a combination of aluminum and glass with a very premium look and feel. They both offer volume buttons on the left side of the device, with the S10e having a dedicated Bixby button as well, and on the right you'll find dedicated power buttons, but on the S10e you're actually getting a fingerprint sensor as well. Apple has long abandoned Touch ID in favor of Face ID and has not offered a fingerprint sensor on any of their phones for some time now. But on the S10e, you actually still get a fingerprint sensor with the power button. Both phones, of course, have a form of face unlock, but if you prefer the ease of use with simply touching the power button to unlock, the S10e still has that option. Stereo speakers can be found across both phones, but once again, a very controversial difference in audio capabilities. You'll notice the S10e still retains that headphone jack, while Apple dropped that on all of their phones a while ago. There's also a different water resistance rating with these phones as well, which is kind of interesting. The S10e offers an IP68 water and dust rating, while the XR has an IP67 rating. All this means is that the iPhone can last in a meter of water for up to 30 minutes, while the S10e can stand a meter and a half in that same time. Not a huge real-world difference, honestly, but certainly something to still note. The final major difference across these two phones has to do with their camera setups and capabilities. Right off the bat, the iPhone XR packs just a single rear lens, a 12 megapixel f1.8 shooter with OIS, 4K video, HDR, and portrait mode among other things. Nothing exactly lacking at first glance, but the single lens setup does have some limitations. The S10e, on the other hand, has a dual camera setup around back. The primary 12 megapixel f1.5 lens with super speed dual pixel autofocus and OIS and an additional 16 megapixel ultra wide angle lens with a 123 degree field of view. You have the option to capture way more in a single picture with the S10e's wide angle, with the iPhone's standard single field of view simply not comparing. The other thing to note is that the iPhone XR does not allow you to take portrait pictures with objects or scenery, only with people. The S10's comparable live focus mode allows for portrait style pictures of anything. The front cameras on these phones are also a little different as well. You'll find a 7 megapixel f2.2 lens up front on the iPhone and a 10 megapixel f1.9 aperture shooter on the Samsung. Both offer a shallow depth of field portrait option, but when it comes to video, the S10e has the upper hand once again with 4K recording at 30 FPS, while the iPhone tops out at 1080p 60 FPS. I know the camera specs only tell one part of the story here, so to get a better idea of the real world shooting capabilities, I'll have a complete camera comparison test in the coming days so you can really get an idea of how these phones work when taking pictures and video. So there you go, those are all the similarities and 
differences I could come up with with the iPhone XR and the new Samsung Galaxy S10e. If I happen to miss anything along the way, let me know down in the comments so we can make sure we get everything mentioned. Also, let me know which device you think is the better value. I think the choice is pretty clear here, but you might think differently and that's totally okay. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.